part one of speaking. So let me ask you my first question. Just OK. Well, do you know your neighbors? Well, I hardly meet neighbors around me. Um, Pasture, uh, mainly, bec uh, mostly because I, uh, mostly because I've been stayed here for a really long time, and the neighbor next door just move in and move out. So uh, they come and they go. So I don't have a really last long impression about them. Yeah, of course. So you said that they actually have not been living for a long time. So because of that, you don't know them well. Mm, yeah. Yeah. OK, very good. And so tell me about your uh, mom. So I want to ask, for example, about your mom, if she knows your neighbors and how is the relationship with neighbors? Well, my mom not really because she, uh, she spent no, most of her day in office uh, for her work. But the yeah. one that has a really good relationship with neighbor in my house is my grandmother uh, because she spent all day doing housework at home. Uh, and uh, so that she can get to know and um, sometimes she helps neighbors a lot so that yeah. yeah, so if you need, if for example they need, neighbors are always willing to offer assistance. So help, of course you can say they help, so why not? But you can also say they're willing to offer assistance. They're ready to help. Yeah, well, so they should be friendly and lovable, I think. OK, so tell me about, you know, maybe neighbors. So do you like, do you like neighbors? <laughs> do you like um, your neighbors? Of course, you don't have close relationship, but do you like them? Um. Well, actually, well, to be to frankly speaking, I don't get in touch with them regularly, but I remember when I was in the old apartment before I moved here, I had a really close and and I spent most of my childhood playing with my neighbor friends there. It's uh, it's a really unforgettable memories in my whole life. Um, however, when we grow up, we all move uh, we all moved to other part of the city and now we didn't we lose talk we lose contact with each yeah. other and that's a really pity in my life yeah of course so but, but i think it was quite fortune it's a good fortune to live actually next to them in the past so you can say good fortune you know that means it was like yeah. lot of chance because uh, so as I realize from what you said, they're warm hearted people. They were warm hearted people. So uh, actually you admired them. OK, so well, uh, tell me about your name. So let me ask you about your actually a previous neighbors. OK. Uh, tell me if they were generous. Um, well, I I couldn't I couldn't know if they are generous or not. They are my friends at my age, so that um, the ah. point found about them is yeah, it's just they are they were funny, playful, and. Uh, I just love spending time with them. But yeah. uh, talking about generous, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, of course. And so you have no idea about their generosity. So you know that so generous is an adjective. Then you yeah, need yeah. to change it to noun. Generosity. 
So, well, you have no idea. OK, so tell me about so in the past, because now, as you said, you are not really close to your neighbors, so you rarely uh, see them. So about maybe your uh, previous neighbors, or your last one. So tell me, how often did you used to see your neighbors in the past and talk to them? Yeah, well, yeah. In the past, uh, I was, I was, uh, I was, I stayed there when I was in my primary school. So I spent little time at school, and the whole time I went uh, after school, I spent whole afternoon playing with them, and and we even had dinner together because we uh, because our parents know each other, and it's just come um, like. It's just come to, it's become a habit that we do every day, and yeah. suddenly talking about it, I felt very happy and and I think at that time, well, yeah, that's it's like valuable memory to me. Yeah. I it's, it's, it's really precious, especially having people that you can talk to, you can confide in, you can talk to, and you can share your experience so that uh, you can overcome difficulties and challenges. Yeah, for example, this person can be at the same age or maybe older. So uh, you said that you were uh, starting in primary school so i think you were not occupied with schoolwork because of this you had enough time to talk and to see them so if you are so you can say you are occupied with schoolwork it means of course you are busy but you were not at that time so you could share life experience of course and yeah sometimes we need someone to talk to overcome our difficulties okay and tell me mm, so you said that you met so it's it's almost like you know just let me uh actually separate my questions so I said uh, how often you used to see. And if now I ask you, when do you meet or when did you meet your neighbors? How to answer? Because you know that they are different. So it's something like, OK, I can often see my uh, neighbors and I just, you know, OK, we greet each other, but meeting is different. So how often and when? When did you last meet each other? When? When did you last meet each other before moving? Mm, yeah, I, I think it's about nine years ago. Yeah, and yeah. we didn't have like, we didn't even have a proper uh, goodbye to each other because we just moved. And we didn't know that uh, because we were a child, we were children, and we didn't know that we were not able to meet in the future, so that we just move without saying anything. And yeah, sometimes uh, I feel pity about that, pitiful yeah. about that. But now I realize that, um, yeah, sometimes when we grow up, we have to people come and go and some memories is just in our heart. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, so but I think, so let me ask you another question. So in the past, normally, maybe your parents used to, I don't know, gather with uh, neighbors, like, I don't know, for something like uh, tea or I don't know, uh, afternoon snack or something like this. So it was really pleasant and appealing to you as children. Like, oh, my mom, I don't know, is inviting the neighbor so we can play, we can have more time. I, I want to know if actually, you know, meeting 
neighbors. So because normally, of course, in the past, not now, maybe in the past, uh, people used to neighbors used to have better relationship in the past. And it was really, I think, attractive to ch for children to have a good time to see someone, for example, new in the house. So how you felt at that time? Mm, a, a dot. At that time, I want to uh, know about yeah. your feeling. Yeah, um, so basically at that time, um, digital devices, smartphone or computers are not widely used. So we spend a lot of time meeting each other face to face. And uh, because my mom was little, uh, was busy at, at that time, she had to care about her work. So she just let me to play and to eat or sometimes sleep at the neighbor's house because yeah. their yeah. parents are really nice and they are willing to help and to take care for me and my sister. So that, yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, so I think it was really attractive to you. And so it was really, so the word that you can use here, uh, appealing interesting and attractive you know that too for example someone it was really appealing to me so attractive and interesting well so i think in the past uh maybe neighbors used to live in harmony with one another do you agree with this i Le totally agree yeah of course so it's something like uh, there was no conflict or disagreement. So do you agree? Yeah, I agree because I've been uh, I've because after I moved in here, uh, while the infrastructure is much better, but I think that I have no one to interact with, uh, mostly because um, people around me are mostly grown ups or either grown-ups or babies, like the newborn babies. Ah, of so course. You hardly of have a chance to get in touch or meet them. Yeah, of course, of course, I know. So actually everything has changed nowadays. So do you ring, you know, comparing to past, you know, everything has changed and now we don't have so, you know, close relationship with uh, neighbors and of course with family members, not only neighbors, so people are really busy, I don't know, at work, at school, and at life. So there is no enough time to spend together. Well, okay, and tell me about uh, your best friend. When you were a child, okay, in your neighborhood. So tell me about who was, who was that, and... Yeah. Well, there's a girl live next, uh, right next door uh, to my house. She was uh, older. She was one year older than me, and um, and but despite our dis, um, but at that time we didn't realize that she's older than me. So she, uh, so we became friends naturally, and and her mom is really nice. She's the one that uh, that took care of uh, me and my sibling when my mom's away. Um, I just remember that I spend I spend most of my time at that time with her and her family. Yeah, of course. And you used to live in an urban area or suburb in the city or suburb in the past? Uh, the city and that was an apartment too. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, okay, let me ask another question. And tell me about now. So, okay. Uh, tell me about your neighborhood. Okay, what is your neighborhood like? Um, well, well, first of all, I think that, um, the city, uh, the areas where I live now, it's like a modern apartment, and every and everything's around are accessible, and the service is real good. The service and the quality uh, of 
the living conditions or the security oaths are really good. But um, the thing that um, that I find it's a little bit, how to say that? I think it separates each other from meeting each other because um, because there's always a great uh, a, a big entrance that yeah. Well, I think that although the the security and the infrastructure is really good, but yeah. there's a, a, a playground and um, and some amenities that divided people Mixed. to another part. Like um, like I think that the playground it's only for children, while the in front part it's for grown ups. Something like that. And I think the yeah I don't know how to go that way. Well, so it's uh, so you talked about well equipped amenities, facilities, of course, and so I think your area. So because you said that it's modern and sophisticated, so your area shouldn't be affordable, right? Or it's affordable. Um, I think it's above average yeah okay so okay can be affordable but not really okay well and uh so tell me about your for example school and work so if i want to know uh, that if it's close to for example your parents work or for example your school oh uh, yeah i used to i used to went to a school which is uh, only a one kilometers away from where I live now. Um, yes. And that's become a really famous primary school in my country now. And it's well equipped with uh, modern amenities. I was one of the first students studying there. Yeah, of course. So, so it's within a walking distance your school and uh, from your uh, home and that's really good okay so do you think you are a good neighbor well I <laughs> think no because um because when i was in school year i was i i spent the i spent half of the day at school and whenever i get home i I all I want is to lying on the bed and staying my in my house for um yeah until I have to go to school again. I don't have time to go out and to meet <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can't be considered as a neighbor now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like stranger. Yeah, of course, because you really go out. And of course, you don't have close relationship with your neighbors. So, of course. Well, and ask you another question. Okay. Um, tell me about uh, best neighbor. So, what is best neighbor in your mind? Mm. Best, right? Best. Yeah. yeah. Well, recently I haven't met once, but um, talking about the best neighbor, I would refer to my old neighbors in my old apartment. That was uh, the girl's family that I have told you before. Of um, they are warm hearted, they are caring and sharing. Um, yeah, and yeah, I think they are very generous. Um, yeah, because they are will they were willing to help my mother. Yeah, and have you ever had nosy neighbors? Um, I um actually I used to met them. That was neighbor of my grand uh, grandparents' house. They are elderly people, so they tend to um so. They have deep interest in other stories, especially yeah. um, 
especially whenever I return to my grandparents' house, they ask me a lot of things like personal, like personal things like what I'm going to do in the future, what university that I would like to go into, or what is my GPA this year, something yeah. like that. And, um. and uh, well, but I don't find it annoying. I just know that it's part of their personality. They, um, I used to find a bit um, irrelevant, but my parents said that because they are older and they want to know more about the new generation's way of thinking. Yeah, of course. So, of course. That's a lot. Yeah, of course. Well, so uh, do you think is it important to be welcoming and to greet people friendly and even to make small talk when they move nearly? Mm, well, absolutely. I think that is a great way to to welcome and to to get in touch with new people, but hardly, uh, but often it's my mom's or my grandmother's job. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course, of course, you have no idea. So of course, yeah. so your mom normally does, I don't know, something that makes small talk to new people to actually become familiar. Yeah, to know. Um, yeah. And there's a like yoga center right, uh, right below my apartment. So she came to that, and she get to know with a lot of people in my apartment. So she has good relationship with neighbors. Yeah, of course. Well, okay. And now let's keep going with part two. Okay. So of course it can be. Uh, actually something like uh, related to part one, one of my question part one, but of course it should be in detail. So let me write, describe one of your neighbors. Actually, it's really difficult talking about a topic that you have no idea about. For example, I remember that in a one session I was talking to one of my students and the topic was about book. And he hates reading book. And I was like, OK, how to answer this question? Because, for example, for each question, do you like? No. Last book, I, I don't read book. And I was like, OK, really, in this situation, how to teach you how to talk on this topic when you are not really interested in and you have no idea about it. So I try to give some negative alternatives to be replaced to positive point. So I know that it's really difficult, especially when it's not the topic that you are interested in or you have a lot about it. You know, like, you know, for example, I have no idea about neighborhood neighbors. OK, yes, briefly can talk about it, but you know, we have to, you know, that so sometimes we need to create a story maybe it's not a real story maybe this person is not a real one but we need to create something in our mind to answer the question this is IELTS and one of common topics okay so describe one of your neighbors you should say when did you become neighbors And do you often meet? And let's see what is this. OK. The next one and explain. Whether your neighbor is a good one.
Okay, I'm done. Prepared. Yeah. So I will tell you about one of my neighborhood that uh, I have a really good impressions and memory with that the memory engraved well in my mind. Well, um, well, we first, well, that was a girl that was one year older than me. And we first met uh, when I was in grade two of primary school. Um, so uh, and we got close very quickly because we live uh, next to each other, um, and she was and she was a really lovable and warm-hearted person that uh, always willing to share me a lot of things, and uh, and her and even her families and even her family support me well. Uh, for example, there's a couple of time that my mom have to um, have to go away to uh, for her work in other city uh, and at that time my grandmother's didn't uh, stay near to help so that she so that uh, I spent a couple of days at her house uh, at her home um, to for uh, so their family can take care of me and my sibling. And I remember that was a really happy memory. Um, and we even go to the same school so that we met uh, each other on a daily basis. It's become more than like a habit. And yeah, um, and, and definitely she's, she and her family is a really nice and lovable, generous neighbor that I will never forget. And um, unfortunately, we we don't have chance to meet uh, each other again, and that is really pitiful. And I hope one day we can, uh, one day we, if there's a miracle, we can have a chance to connect and to be friends again. Well, OK, very good. So first of all, I think that you could have and you develop cordial neighbor relationship with this is something like for warm from your heart. So the first one, uh, example if you want you can use present perfect but something that actually remained in past is better to be used in past so we developed a cordial neighbor relationship okay. and the only point here, yeah, I can say that the first uh, maybe not issue, but I think we need it, as I told you, and grammatical structure is not enough. So, for example, I have a neighbor named Alex, and we've been we have been neighbors for I think past ten years. So this is. I have present and we've been neighbors, so present perfect. So the second one. And now, so you can talk about past, okay? And for example, uh, we, okay, um, became friends shortly after I moved into the neighborhood. So again, we have past, so the third tense, okay? And as I told you, uh, I think that, you know, uh, we tried to develop a close friendship over time. And of course we have developed and uh, we can say we often meet each other during, for example, our morning walks. And I think it's a kind of a daily routine for both of us. So and. Uh, 
I think it's always nice to start the day with a friendly conversation and some exercise. So it's really good. So we can share stories, we can discuss current events, and sometimes, of course, we plan some activities together. The fourth tense that is present. And I think, you know, I consider uh, Alex to be a great neighbor. Not only he's friendly, another structure, not only he's friendly and approachable. So this one is really important when I need him, but he also actually goes out of his way. Do you remember uh, extra mile to go extra mile or go out of your way to help? others you know all neighbors in the community so another structure again i use the fifth one uh, whether it's offering you know a helping hand with for example i don't know everyone and i don't know lending tools equipment i think alex is always there to assist and you know moreover he is really respectful of our privacy and ensures that, you know, actually noises level are kept at the minimum during late hours, especially. So I think, you know, sometimes he uh, also organized, you know, neighborhood gatherings. I don't know, several uh, on some occasions. So it's something like I think and he can create some good memories. So really kind and uh, I think warm hearted and you know, he can create good moments for all neighbors. So this way you can uh, make your answer. So I use more than two tenses, but or structures, but of course present is normal to be used past, normal, present, perfect. And, you know, I can use to, for example, for your case, you can easily use, especially when you talk about something on a daily basis in the past you used to. It's really good, so you can you can use. Well, just let me write some words on the board that you, maybe you can uh, use when making your answer. Of course, yours was really good, so, but maybe you can add. So, you developed, okay, you developed, okay, close friendship all the time. So I would prefer uh, present perfect here. So why not? Of course, maybe something it uh, ended in the past, but why not? You can, okay? And uh, so it's really good to start a warm and friendly conversation. And you can say that he's friendly and approachable because it's really important, especially when you have a friend, when you actually consider someone as a good friend, it's really important. And going out of your way, going out of your way to help to assist people, others. So it can be in the community, of course. Because, you know, we, uh, we don't want to repeat neighborhood again. So whether offering a helping hand Example, I don't know with household chores even. So if I need, yeah, really, he offers helping me in house uh, whole chores so easily. Lending tools and equipment. So for example, so he always ready to assist and being respectful of your privacy is really important. And make sure to make sure that noises level again, I'm using passive. Are kept at a minimum. Especially the ring. 
late hours, especially during late hours. So, and you know, just this, okay. Well, um, for example, another thing, he always notify us about a package uh, delivery. It's like, you know, if we have something, of course, he makes sure to notify, uh, for example, Monica, okay, did you get your package or something like this? So this way uh, is re really important. So because he wants to actually prevent any inconvenience. So of course, it's really important to make convenient space or environment with other. And you know, I can say he always he always prevents any inconvenience. I can consider it as best. OK, this way. Well, and now let's keep going with part three. OK, let me ask you my first question. OK. Uh, my first question, what do you think of the relationship among neighbors in the city? Um, well, well, I think it's the relationship between neighbors in the city. It's, um, well, nowadays, uh, because of the pro uh, proliferation of social media and um, digital devices, people hardly spend time to meet each other face to face and this can reduce uh this can reduce community harmony because uh, people don't get to know each other than they used to um and this can increasing boundaries between community and uh, residents, which uh, in the long time can can make can create a generation with little interaction. Yeah, of course, of course. So as you said, the nature of relationships among neighbors in the city, of course, can vary. Uh, actually, maybe it's yeah, I think can based on can be based on various factors. And, you know, of course, significant factors, as you said, like, for example, social media, including cultural norm. So something like, OK, what are standards? Maybe your neighbor has different culture from you, individual personalities. So, of course, my character is different, but so maybe we can't get on very well and of course some changes like specific dynamics of the neighborhood so you can say that uh, the nature of relationships as i told you my neighbors in city can actually can be different can vary can change okay so significantly based on various factors including cultural norms and social media, individual personalities, and etc. Well, okay, just you know, maybe the only word that I can teach you here very is good, different, you know, and individual personalities. Yeah, maybe it's a good one. And cultural standards or norms can be a good one. So, OK, well, and now has a relationship among neighbors changed over time? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Has the relationship among neighbors changed over time? Mm. Well, I um, compared to the past than we that we used to, um, the relationship has been changed a lot. For example, if in the past people tend to be friend and to close and to 
be close with their neighbors because um, they live um, near to each other. So they maybe sh so they can share and care each other. Um, however, nowadays, especially youngster, they don't um, the the competitive in work load uh, makes them more self-centered and they hardly care about others around them um, and e and they don't even have time and energy to meet and to uh, create new relationships around them um, and that's and that may be one of the main drivers for the shift in new generation. So as you said, I think one significant factor, you said work overload, and I say is the busy schedule. That people have which often leave them with limited time to connect with their neighbors. So this is the first one. So as a result, I think the level of interaction and familiarity, of course, familiarity between neighbors has decreased compared to previous years. So this way you can answer. Okay. And now what can be done to improve the relationship with neighbors? Well, I think that's a tricky question because I have never thought about it. Mm. Um, I think that among neighborhood, uh, for example, in apartment, um, the authorities can uh, can help some uh, community services or f uh, or like of like a festival or something to create uh, to help to connect people um, that con that may attract a large base of people to to come and maybe during this change this change. Uh, they may have uh, it may help to connect uh, each other together uh, connect them together um, uh, however uh, I think that's uh, however I think uh, I think that no matter how the if, how effective the measure is this large lazy rise from each person derived from different personalities uh, because it depends on the person who want to socialize or to become more close to their neighborhood or not. It's um, therefore it's not it's not the problem of the cause or the or the measures it's it should be uh, it should depends on different people. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, uh, yeah, I do agree with you, but I think, I think uh, to improve the relationship, you know, with neighbors, of course, it's really important for individuals I'm talking about to take proactive steps. So what is this to take? Proactive steps. Be proactive, actually. And what is that? You know that some people are proactive, some people are reactive. 
I am proactive, so I make plans. So I don't look forward to something, for example, to happen. For example, I all the time am all the time ready so that I'm proactive. I'm reactive on the other hand. I wait when something happens, I react. I wait for people to come and talk to me, then I react. But when I take proactive steps, I make plans. I make something happen. So this is the first one. And I think to take proactive step, uh, maybe one effective approach is organizing get togethers. Do you remember we learned this word? Is organizing yeah. get togethers or you mean community events, not community service. Community events, as you said, like festivals or something like this, maybe by government or I'm talking about individual. So it's something like a smaller scale. So community events where neighbors can come together, can socialize. So I think this provides an opportunity for people to interact and to build stronger connections to build stronger connections, OK? Yeah. Well, and now the next one, what kinds of problems can people have with their neighbors? Um, well, talking about neighbor because they live uh, near each other. So the one problem I can think of is that um, the noise in the house the noise level are annoying that uh, it uh, may affect their neighbors, uh, especially in during late hours. For example, uh, in the evening, they keep playing music or noise loudly, and it's um, one of the reasons why that keep their neighbors annoying. and. Um, yeah. Well, of course. So as you said, I think the most important. Yeah, as you said, no disturbance. So that is really important. So. Noise. Disturbance. Really important, as you said, and you know, normally maybe they can have some disagreements. So there they dispute. Oh, let me write it here. They dispute. They have some disagreement over what? Nor what is typing here? OK, this one. OK, over properties. Or property boundaries. So you know that they're right. Common examples. So noise disper uh, actually disturbance and dispute over property or for example, property boundaries is really common that normally and actually uh, communications uh, play a crucial, really important role in resolving, solving such conflicts. Resolve and conflicts can be used. For example, an open dialogue understanding open dialogue talk freely and easily and understanding can be really helpful so and uh, I think they can be maybe beneficial solutions so we need to find to resolve to tackle to deal with these issues okay and the next question. Uh, how do you think the neighbors can help each other? Um, the first thing pop up in my head, it's uh, the emergency case um, because um, living near each other um, can lead to the fact that they can uh, they can hear about the noise in each other, how this 
so whenever there's a emergency cases that really need for the help, um, um, for example, robberies or um, or conflicts uh, within uh, or, or conflicts in the house, so the neighbor may hear and come to help um, to uh, and this may re this may help to reduce the consequences that can be happened. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe to avoid getting some negative and uh, dangerous and threatening consequences. Yeah, very good. So offering assistance, as you said, in any cases. So offering and I want to add maybe sharing resources. Yeah, why not? So it can be either no, like lending household items, tools or anything, and of course helping tasks. So what is that? Helping with tasks. For example, uh, pet walking, gardening. So actually, uh, this is really a good way, as you said, to strengthen relationship. For example, when I need some help for gardening, so why not? You can help me as my neighbor. So sometimes to have a friendly conversation, maybe as you said, emergency, or I want to change it to challenging times during challenging times that we need people's assist. OK, so. Challenging times. OK, and that's it. Well, do you have any questions related to this word? Mm, no. OK, and so we discuss another topic in detail. Thank you for being perfect like always and have a wonderful week <laughs> you too and have thank a good week you. thank you goodbye, goodbye. you're welcome